Sons of bitches, the Nazis and them snitches, and talking ain't what got it done. Well, you better rise up to the power. Well, this ain't no time for cowards. When the clock strikes the witching hour, well, this ain't no time for cowards. Getting a little bit of love for all them Jerry Lee licks. That's a hundred thousand hours of watching Roy Clark on the Hee Haw right there. Scared, darling. Well, our children—they're past the color of our skin and all of our sins that we have. Come on. Well, you better rise up to the power. This ain't no time for cowards. When the clock strikes the witching hour, no, this ain't no time for cowards. Hillbilly protest music. <laughs> Doing some new songs today because I don't have a band. We just got off the Outlaw Country Cruise. <laughs> Had a big time. And also, I want to let you know this will be the first commercial during this 45 minute set. I wrote a book in a big publishing company called Hashtag Books out of New York City. Put it out and it went to number one on the Amazon Music bio charts, which I don't know what that means, but it's something I can tell my mother and impress her with. And if you walk right around the corner to the right of where I'm looking over where those things are, uh, Sweet Sarah's over there selling books and I think we got blenders and surfboards and it's... It's like a damn Juarez garage sale over there. <laughs> I'd like to do a new song that I just wrote about a guy who passed away recently who I used to hang out with in Marfa and drink tequila with, and his name was Boyd Elder. And Boyd Elder went out to Los Angeles in the 60s with a, Eddie, uh, with a guy named Bobby Fuller. Bobby Fuller was... I walk, I walk the law and the law on y'all. I walk the law and the law on. So they went out to, they packed this Cadillac up and they went out and, and Bobby Fuller became this big rock star in 
and Boyd Elder was hanging out with Dennis Hopper, and he found all these Longhorn skulls in the trunk of his car, and the, he dropped acid for the first time. This is like mid-60s, and he painted these Longhorn cattle, and people lost their mind. Ed Shea, the big artist from Los Angeles, and the whole intelligentsia showed up, and all these um, middle-aged Beverly Hills millionaire housewives just had to have one of these uh, psychedelic skulls and Boyd made more money than a show dog could jump over. And he ended up doing the first three record covers with Henry Diltz, and he did uh, all these cool stuff for Graham Parsons and the Eagles and all this stuff. Anyway, he passed away. He looked like, uh, he looked like Clint Eastwood's stunt man in the spaghetti western era. Like, women just would look at him and their clothes would just magically fly off. But he was so cool that I just had to write a song about him. This is the ballad of Boyd Elder. Yeah. Boyd Elder was a lone star man, painted long horn schools on the man. Kept the house out in Valentine, and it hung out in Marvel when the light. Would shine. Uh -huh. But Boyd liked his silver tequila Lost horn saloon with Sheila Said L.A. was so illegal Back in the 70s flying with the eagles Come on Now he's driving through the desert in a Cadillac With a trunk full of longhorn schools in the back And he's running on a paint He's working on a bus, he's loving all the women and he's running from the fuzz. You know he is. The cocktails had a lot of dough to fill Boyd's skulls with keys of blow. Said he turned them down, damn it, every time he just couldn't dig the pressure on the borderline man. And I couldn't either. Well, El Chino Dare was the solo show with some high desert art from Presidio. It was one big party, him and Bobby Fula. The Trans Vegas boys wasn't no one cooler. Hello. Let me see if I can do this without a bass player. Show y'all short. Boyd Elder was a well known character from Mexico to the west of America. He'd pick him up, Jack, and let him go. He said, Hey, baby, now keep our soul, honey. Boyd Elder was a lone star man, paid a long horn schools on the man, kept the house out in Valentine. And it hung out in marble when the lights would shine. Hey, JD, give me one of those cold bears back there, son. Watch out, Marlboro. Don't burn them velour seats, son. Thank y'all so much. I'd like to dedicate this song to doing a show at 12 noon. The song is called, I may have to do it, but I don't have to like it. One, two, and you know what to do. Hey, hey. Well, mama said, yes, you got to get out of bed. Yeah, I'm going across your aching head. If you come back, you better bring me some bread and I'll cut and fed the red. I may have to do it, may have to do it. Don't have to leg it, don't have to leg it. May have to do it, may have to do it. Don't have to leg it.
There's daytime people and there's nighttime people. And it's the nighttime people job to take the money from the daytime people. The Wiley Lama said that. Ready? May have to do it. May have to do it. Don't have to like it. Don't have to like it. May have to do it. May don't have to like it. May have to do it, do it, do it. Don't have to like it. Well, I may have to do it. Don't have to like it. May have to do it. Don't have to like it. May have to do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Thank you for participating. Sometimes I have nightmares that I'm doing that song and nobody says anything. It's so weird and uncomfortable, but I'm good with uncomfortable. I'm okay. I'm an acquired taste, man. Until last Tuesday night, I used to just go to bed as Jesse Dayton, but after last Tuesday night, now I go to Austin Music Hall of Fame, Jesse Dayton, now. It only took me like half a century to get in. All right, here's a new song that I wrote. I realized that Amarillo by Morning was by far and away number one, the greatest all-time country rodeo song ever written. And, and to Garth Brooks, who I used to not care for uh, when he first came out, but now I realize he sounds like fucking Hank Williams compared to what's going on now. 
he wrote a song himself called Much Too Young to Feel This Damn Old, which he actually wrote himself, and it's a brilliant rodeo song. But I thought, well, I can't write another rodeo song, but I can write a rodeo prison song. <laughs> You've ever been to the prison, a prison rodeo back in the 70s? not something you should take your kids to, that's for sure. This is called the Huntsville Prison Rodeo. Well, we moved into a bigger house when the old man got a raise. Still did the same things we did old pay days Mama packed a picnic lunch We drive up 95 To the Huntsville Prison Rodeo To see who survived Well we drive into the prison gates and the guard dogs checked our trucks We had no weapons or contraband And they were shit out of luck Well now the preachers were full Of cowboy boots and peewee boots and jeans 30 out 6 and mirror shades on the guards Look at me. Well, at the Huntsville Prison Rodeo, the cowboys were adored. Few seconds of freedom between the hospital and morgue. Bucking box and pissed off bulls put on one hell of a show. Saw some desperados riding at the Huntsville Prison Rodeo. The calls of roll. Hey, y'all, that's old boy is only 22 and he's riding life without parole. And his bull Diablo, Lord, he's as mean as a snake. Well, watch him fly off Diablo's back here, his bones. Snap and break. Yes, at the Huntsville Prison Rodeo, the Cowboys were adored. Well, now, three seconds of freedom between the hospital and morgue. And for a kid in 1978, I saw some hard ways to go. Desperados riding in the Huntsville Prison Rodeo. Oh. Thank you very much. I haven't been playing that song, but. I'm about to go to Los Angeles on April 9th and make a record with my friend Shooter Jennings. 
who I've known since he was in the ninth grade when I played for his dad. And I called him up and I said, well, the liquor label's gonna let me make another record. And uh, you've been, you won four Grammys in the last three years producing records and I need to call in my favor. <laughs> he said, damn, your honesty's brutal, JD. And uh, so we're gonna go out there and make a record. <laughs> All right, this song's called Daddy Was a Badass. One, two, get it, old son. Well, Daddy was a badass, who will feel white trash, never took nobody's lip. He was a honky tonk dancer, even beat cancer. 40 years smoking, just quit. He had color ring and pin up black ink tattooed four arms from the war. He won a purple hard medal, never heard it pedal, the killing he did with the four. So they sent him on home, mind I blow, not man's about as fast. Well, it's a dang good thing. Mama met daddy. Uh, his daddy was a badass. He was. Well, he met her mama on the dance floor in Deep East, Texas. She was the belle of the ball. He had an old man son giving him a run for his hand and marriage to call. So I took the rich kid to the back of the bar and threatened him with his life. He said, hey, little girl, your date had to leave. Now you're going to be my wife. I guess it's time to charm. Turn the wrong. It's 50 years as fast. Wait a minute. Are y'all still out there? <laughs> he got the one and only girl in the whole wide world. His daddy was a badass. Uh-huh. Daddy made it out of the generic patch and gambling paid for his school. The University of Texas show got reckless living on eight ball pool. He had back room all night poker games, a pistol by a roller and bone. He was a hot tip handicapper on football, never took a student loan. So he passed with honors, selling numbers to everybody in his class. Then they drove him back home to Old East Texas. Here we go. Built a little house and they started that company. They made drilling bits for the oil rigs and made a shit ton of money. Had all my uncles and some good old boys from back in his roughneck days. Till the shop burned down, I was never thinking ahead and went to separate ways. So I bought five grand, flew to Vegas, put it on a red flag. He made it 200 G's. He got the business back, y'all. Uh, here you go. Oh, yeah. Daddy retired and he sold his business and the kids are grown and gone. He said, woman, I just can't sit around here. You know I've got to keep bringing it on. Climbed on his 1963 pioneer. Father gave a son and wrote it wide open till the end of the world off a cliff and into the sun. Now it's beautiful. Mama was smiling and said, that's the way you should have passed. And a blaze, a blaze of glory. He was gone like a flash. Uh, his daddy was a badass. His daddy was a badass. His daddy was a bad
Thank y'all so much. If you would like to hear some of the song stories behind these songs, we got the book for sale today. Thank you for hitting the tip jar. I'd just like to let you know that every dollar that I make today off of my books or my records or trucker hats or tips or whatever all goes into the pocket of my band members. I don't take anything from today, nothing. It all goes to the band guys. And that, my friends, is how you keep from getting your killer musicians poached by more famous people. I wasn't just doing it out of the kindness of my heart. Come on. I'm kidding. All right, this is a brand new song that I wrote when I was on the boat. I've never really played it. Played it one time, I think, on the boat, but I haven't played it. And I wrote it for my, my wife. I don't write very many of these kind of songs, so when I do, they usually mean something, at least to me. This is called Angel in My Pocket. Got an angel in my pocket I walk around with all the time When the mean old world starts picking on me My angel starts to shine A tiny glow from my front pocket In my faded Levi jeans Gives me enough strength to make it through Damn near anything And when it shines, shines, shines Lord, it shines Well, I pick myself back up More times than I've been knocked down Broken bones and hearts on motorcycles Riding at the speed of sound But that angel in my pocket Always brings me back to you Where my secrets are safe And the love we make Feels raw and pure and true And I sure do miss you, darling When I'm gone more than half the time and when the night's tears start falling, my pocket shines, shines, shines. hurt myself a million ways thinking I didn't deserve you but survived the dark from my angel's light and somehow made it through now the universe is smiling it had other plans for me it put a angel in my pocket brought you to me and I sure do miss you darling when I'm gone more than half the time and on nights when the tears are falling, well, my pocket shines, shines, shines. My pocket shines, oh yeah. Hey, my pocket shines. the sentimentals we're going to get this morning. It's all beer drinking and cheating music from here out, all right? Had about as much of that shit as I can take at this point. Oh, but you got, what are you going to do, you know? You know what it is. You get older, man. You get more sensitive. You, you give zero Fs. You start growing your hair out and shit. 
people walk up, hey, man, where's the pompadour? I'm like, I don't know, man. I left it out in the backyard in the middle of the pandemic somewhere. <laughs> During the uh, pandemic, I, uh, well, the day I found out Billy Joe Shaver passed away, I was very upset. And uh, I went to Home Depot, and I bought all these bricks, and I laid them out at the, at the garden center, all right? And these people are looking at me like I'm out of my mind. What's this dude doing, uh, putting all these bricks? And I took it back home, and I built the Billy Joe Shaver Memorial Fire Pit in my backyard. Now it's my favorite place to hang out. Some nights when I get all my activities done of being, you know, done being a grown up, I'll go out there and smoke a little Mexican lettuce. And maybe have a little drink of some brown liquor. Listen to a little Billy Joe Shaver and get my mind right. Uh, anyway, this is the uh, most ridiculous song I've ever written in my life. And also uh, the most profitable song I've ever written in my life. It's called I'm at Home Getting Hammered While She's Out Getting Nailed. <laughs> Oddly enough, there's no cuss words in this song. Roger Miller would be proud of the wit without the cursing. And I was hanging out at a place called the Turtle Club. Turtle Clubs outside of Houston, Texas. And I was hanging out there with these two bubbas, man. They were, they were roofers. I don't know how these guys ever got up on the roof. They are just broke down. And the one guy goes, what are you going to do tonight? And he goes, I'm going to go home and get hammered. And he goes, why your old lady's out getting nailed? And I had a white trash Shakespearean epiphany. <laughs> and I, I walked out to my car, and I found a water burger bag and a Sharpie, and I wrote, I'm at home getting hammered while she's out getting nailed. Then I walked back into this bar to see if I could glean some more brilliance from these two idiots that I was hanging out with. Of course, big egg on that. Nothing, not a zilch. And I got a little hammered that night, and a friend of mine said, hey, you shouldn't drive. I'm like, yeah, I shouldn't drive. And they're like, you live right around the corner. I'll give you a ride home. So he gave me a ride home. And next day, I go up to get my, um, my car from the bar. You know that walk of shame. And I open the car, and I look down, and I see this water burger bag, and it says, I'm at home getting hammered while she's out getting nailed. I was like, that's some goddamn genius stuff that came out of that idiotic night I had last night. So here it is, and uh, let's send this first part out to all you uh, snowman Jerry Reed fans. <laughs> Started in the morning, carried well into the night, throwing dirty dishes with all of our might. Sad commentary on a marriage that has failed. I'm at home getting hammered while she's up getting nailed. Police pulled into my trailer park. Domestic violence calls you just after dark. Well, it's late night with a boss. She trying to make a sale. I'm at home getting hammered while she's up getting nailed. Watch this. Watch you fly. Like a dang circus up in here. Fun, I, love you. I forgot the words. Anybody know the second verse? I'm home drinking whiskey in my easy chair. Watching Jerry Lawler pulling Andy Carpenter's hair. I had any suspicion. So I opened up her mail. I'm at home getting hammered while she's up getting nailed. Watch this.
a lot of words, kind of overrated. I hang out with a lot of strummers. I am not a strummer. And they always look at me like, how late did you have to stay up to learn that Jerry Reed lick, man? But it's got me a lot of gigs playing the guitar, and I still play the guitar with everybody from Glenn Campbell to Glenn Danzig. Everybody from X to the Johnny Cash. And if you have a profitable act, extra dough, you too can call up Jesse D and he might come play guitar for you. I am the president of all JD LLC. I wrote this song about a movie called The Devil's Rejects and I ended up doing the full soundtrack for it and it helped put a little ching a in my pocket. Take care of the kid, the wife, buy a house, get out of that $250 a month garage apartment that I was living in. Went on to do quite a few movies with uh, a guy named Rob Zombie, somebody that doesn't normally travel in my circles. We made a couple other movies. We got involved in that Halloween movie franchise. And at the time, I had no idea that after I played a character called Captain Clegg that I would walk into the Walgreens and a little ninth grade goth girl with black fingernail polish would go, oh my God, are you Captain Clegg? <laughs> and never wanted to disappoint, I said, absolutely. Not exactly when I had in mind when I grew up listening to George Strait and ZZ Top. <laughs> but the universe had other plans for me and I did what I had to do and uh, made these movies and made my life a little bit easier and made it where I could come up in the middle of the day and wake up and grab a cup of coffee and a really nice, well-stringed Martin guitar and come up in here and play for you fine people and not have to worry about it. I'm a very grateful man. When I bought these sunglasses, the guy said, how dark do you want them? I said, I want them about 10 p.m. at night at the Continental Club dark. Which is when I'm playing Friday night at 10 p.m. at the Continental Club. If you can't make that, I'm doing one last show at 3 p.m. at Mojo Nixon's private party, which is not private at all, again, at the Continental Club. <laughs> playing at the Continental Club makes me feel like I'm 18, and I love them. It's more romantic than playing Red Rocks or the Beacon Theater anywhere for me. And I'm proud to have my friend who owns Lucy's Fried Chicken let me start off this whole shenanigans and be the first act of South by Southwest. Well, in the mall of the story is sad but true. I love to drink, she loves to screw. Hobo's got a better life riding on the rails. I'm an old man hammered while she's a good nail. time for one more. Uh, when they, I just did a 31 city book tour and I'm here to remind you that when you hear the naysayers talk about Austin, how much it's grown and changed, let me just let y'all in on a little secret. Every major city in the entire world is changing, not just Austin, Texas. <laughs> I went to Barcelona in 93. It ain't the same, man. They got McDonald's there, okay? Uh, but through my book travels, I went and visited a lot of bookstores and I ended up playing acoustic by myself and telling stories because frankly, reading out of my own book just felt a little too self-indulgent for a working class kid from Beaumont, Texas. 
So I told some stories, but I've got stories in this book. We've only got, uh, I think, 24 books left before we, I mean, you can get it online anywhere. It's with Hashtag. You can buy it at any Barnes & Noble. I hear they're sold out in Detroit. Is that correct, sir? <laughs> you know, Detroit, Detroit loves me, man. Come on now. It's my working class people. I'll tell you about my buddy I met in Detroit. I tried to buy him a beer the first time I met him. He goes, well, what are you doing? I said, trying to buy you a beer. He goes, I don't know if I like you or not yet. <laughs> That's Detroit. He got Taco Bells that look like check cash in places so nobody robs a joint. Man. Anyway, I got stories in here about playing with Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings and Mike Ness and just all kinds of stuff in here. So Sarah, sweet Sarah, is over at the uh, merchandise booth. And uh, I have a new uh, record coming out pretty soon with a guy named Santiago Jimenez Jr. that's gonna be on my new label. And uh, the label gave me an imprint. He's playing over at the Continental Club at the same time as me. So I just delivered uh, our, record, our record label gift basket, which was a carton of Marlboro Lights in a case of Miller High Life. He's like, Mio, I'm so glad you didn't buy me a bunch of candy and shit. He's so great. He's so cool. He's just the coolest guy in the room. Blows my mind. Anyway, if you think uh, all that music sounds like circus music and you're a white person and you've never gotten into it, when this record comes out, buy this one because you're going to want to hang out in your backyard and barbecue and shoot the shit and listen to this record, okay? One more song. This is a Towns Van Zandt. I'll do a cover song here. Well, Loretta, she's a Bob Room girl with some sevens on her sleeve. Well, she dances like the diamond shines And she tells me lies, Lord, I just love to believe Well, her age is always 32 Hey, I'm laughing as a haze on you Well, she spends my money like waterfalls But she loves me like I want her to And I said, hey, Loretta, won't you say to me, Jesse, put your guitar on. Here we go. Take a little shot of blues and play some sad and wailing songs. I said, hey, Loretta, I won't be gone for long. You can leave the dancing boots on. Any time. Here we go. She's sweetest at the break of day. Well, she don't cry when I move along with her, at least not till I'm gone away. I said, hey, Loretta, I won't be gone for long. You can leave them dancing boots on, girl. Well, she's lonely, and lazy, and she's wild and free, but I can love her anytime. And I said, Lord, now she spends my money like waterfalls, and she loves me like I need her to. 
Let's do one of more for the long relationships, all you sadistic people like me who stay in long relationships. Ready? Sweetest like the setting sun, prettiest at the break of day. Oh Lord, I can have her anytime. Just think about that. Sweetest like the setting sun, but she's prettiest at the break of day. Hey, 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 hey. you guys. Thanks for coming out here early. It means so much to me. I'm going to go over here and sign some stuff at the merch booth. Come say hello. Cha-cha-cha!